this is the mid-season analysis of the drivers how they've performed from the beginning of the season till now and from the least driver this is how they have performed this season and the teams in which they represent the impact of their team principle on their performance this season has been a very wonderful season it has been a season with so many ups and downs sincerely it has been one of the seasons in which there is no way you would not laugh and it has been a very great season in f1 aside from what has happened some few years back we are seeing a new resurgence of some teams like mercedes are really performing we are seeing the strength of Ferrari, McLaren are coming out to show what they can do. We can see the ups and downs of teams like Alpine, that's the Renault Walkins team. We can see the slump of the Aston Martin from where they were last year, how they really performed, how they came out gun blazing pra -pra 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 last year, but now they are just. Woo. So, it's a wonderful season and we've seen some teams that are on some tracks that we didn't expect they would really perform. Teams like Williams, picking points, you know, it's been a wonderful season. Now, let me start from Sauber and I'll start from Joe Guan Yu. Sauber has proven this season that they have the worst car this season. The first six races of Sauber were used to solve the, the tire nut issue. As in, they were having two minutes tire change from La One. It's over two minutes sometimes. That's how worse they were. As in, for a whole theme. It was not funny. <laughs> And we saw big show of shame, especially at the beginning of the season, from the Sauber team. And they were proud about it. There was a point in which, in the beginning of the season, which they had a very good car. But that tire change, the show of shame they brought, really regressed them. When others improved their car and they were able to solve their issues, their car had regressed. And giving them points, I think I will start with Joe Guan Yu. His teammate has outqualified him this season. And his teammate has done better than him, even with that car. I think in my own ratings, I'll give Joe Guan Yu the last position give him the last position though he did a very good job in china that was his most impressive race this season but he's still that car seriously that has brought himself and his teammate to that position that's for Zhou Guan Yu from Sauba team and we have Valtteri Bottas coming 19th still the car but he has done a beautiful job for that team even when they've not scored any point that's the only team this season that has not scored a point with all their issues they're still where they are their team principal Alessandro Alune Bravi is going next season <laughs> Yeah. Jonathan Whitley should be taking over from 2026 but there will be some works next season I think Alune Bravi should be going next season from what we are looking at because it does not fit into what Audi are bringing in and Audi have started their investment so they are taking over little by little but 2026 they are taking over fully but with what we are seeing they are already doing an underground job to Audi. take things over but I think he's one of the poorest managers or team principals this season he has not done an impressive job with that team at all with the state of the card they have with the state of the team the drivers there's no motivation from that team so for me they remain at the list of the group now logan Sargent. logan Sargent would have come 17 or 16 but spending two full years in f1 and still not showing progress i think it has shown why he's really leaving the team while carlos Sainz will be coming in to substitute him from next year 2025 and all the investment he has brought to williams it has really shown that he's not the right driver for them the same car is driving is what alex albon is driving and alex Albon is bringing out some points from it though Alex Albon has destroyed or incurred more destruction to the car to inhibit their progress but he has also gotten points for the team for me Lugan Sargent has not done a good job this season there are some places in which he has driven well but in all he has not done a good job this season to make him what that seat next season and that is where he needs to bow out the driver next in line a lot of people will not agree with me but I'll tell you whether you like it or not my number 17 driver this season is Sergio Perez. Why Sergio Perez? There's been a lot of speculations. Sergio Perez tired last season, hot, dragging with his teammate in the best car, best, fastest car ever in F1. Yes, this season he started and after two races, he just slumped. He slumped totally and his slump was massive. Yes, at the point we knew the RB20 was no more the best car. That was by race six. I was already saying it, that the RB20 lost his value. The RB20 was already dragging with McLaren then. Yes, but what did we see? We saw a Sergio Perez struggling in the same car that his teammate is shining in yes max verstappen has shown that he is a grown driver he's a more mature driver he can drive his heck out of that car 
and is one of the best driver on the grid but it's the same machinery these drivers they have little little differences amongst them last year i was backing him like oh the car is not to his taste forget about taste to some drivers to someone like alonso to someone like Hamilton, that have been driving the same car since 2007-2004 now driving a new car as something different and this car is looking like the car that the F2, F3 guys are driving, but more faster, more ground effect, in which they can easily adapt. But these guys are not adapting, but they are driving the heck out of the car. And Perez is just out there, toying with his future. Living, oh, all the investment he's bringing, oh, the Mexican cartel, the Mexican everything. No, they ain't gonna save you, bro. You are not doing a good job. Even if he's qualifying some five, six tens behind his teammates, you can say, yeah, he's doing a good job. But hey, three or four Q1, a sponge this season, a lot of Q2 to expunging this season wow even at the point logan sergeant had better qualifying than sergio perez i don't know how sergio perez got to this point so if he was driving the logan sergeant car it would have even been worse it might even be worse than zero going you that's the reason why he's not in 18th for me because logan sergeant since last year to this year there was no improvement that is how worst the season has been for him and i think at every point he had been jiked he had not really given us the way or how we should perceive him now we learned that red bull were about terminating his contract but liberty media came in to support him especially with the mexican fans and spanish fans all over the world ah but to me i don't think liberty media needs to do that because what they need to concentrate on is how to bring in 11th and 12th team how it will work how they are going to face the us doj about andretti while some other teams are also trying to come in it's not only andretti that is trying to come in so they need to look at how to manage those not manage sergio perez i understand they are concerned because of the money and the marketing but sergio perez has not done himself any good this season he has had the worst outing in q1 and q2 this season for red bull than any other drivers red bull has had in previous season and for me hmm, he has a long way to go to say red bull will keep him next year there is no way i can see that happening even demoting him i think red bull might rather bring in a new driver next year in which we don't know and promote daniel ricardo possibly because i don't see red bull promoting yuki sinoda yuki sinoda is not in their plan yuki sinoda is an under driver he's a japanese guy with under background so it's not a red bull thing seriously that is the politics in sporting i don't see any way they will promote yuki sinoda they would rather promote daniel ricardo either demote sergio perez to rb vcab or bring in liam lawson or another driver but from the way we are looking at it sergio perez is not getting a seat next year number 16 driver Kevin Magnussen. Kevin Magnussen has been an outstanding driver this season. If you remember Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, Miami Grand Prix, he had to pack his truck to save his teammate, Nico Hockenberg. He was driving to save his teammate, but was not driving to save himself. He's had some poor decisions, some poor driving this season that had really not worked for him. If you remember, Monaco is the ultimate cause of the accident that cost Red B over 3 million through Sergio Perez. He drove the worst driving. That is the worst driving anybody can driving f1 that ah should i call that worst driving <laughs> <laughs> Ocon and Gasly, we get to that. But I think that was the worst driving. That was what he should not have done. There is no space there. Where is Kevin Magnussen going there? I think that brings him to number 16. I'm having like a 60 40. He done a 40% great job for the team, getting them points, scraping for points for the team, for his teammate and for himself, and also making sure as development is great and they are moving in the right direction. But in destruction <laughs> and <laughs> driving against his teammate he's not done a good job against his teammate nico hockenberg has outperformed him in races in qualifying everything and himself in driving there are some races in which he has not done himself a good job though he's, kevin is a good guy this season has not been one of his best season and he won't be driving for us next season we have oliver bierman coming in for us next season nico hockenberg also will be leaving we have esteban Ocon coming in. i'll get to that but i think that's the worst pairing on the grid esteban Ocon and oliver bierman is the worst pairing on the grid for us but I don't know how they are going to deal with it. Ass, just deal with your ass issue. And Fire Komatsu in ass has done a beautiful job this season. Getting that point after losing Gunther Steiner. Gunther Steiner has been one of the prolific team principals. Running that team for close to 10 years or 10 years. And doing a good job. The promotion, the money, everything, marketing. And Ayao Komatsu coming in to take the lead. He has done a good job. They've gotten some great points. He has been able to deal with Kevin Magnussen in his own way. And that is great for the team. That team has done a very good job, I think. They deserve.
deserve what they are getting. Next season, I'm just concerned about us and how they will manage Esteban Ocon and Oliver Biema. <laughs> I don't know how they will manage it, but I wish them well. I don't wish to be in their shoes. Number 15th driver for me this season. Lance Troll. I'll sing Shemi Lomo Babolo. He's the son of Lawrence Troll. But Lance sometimes has not shown that he deserves an F1 seat. In the last few races, he has shown that he deserves the seat. I think after he has been spoken to or he got a new deal in which we know Lance Troll is not going anywhere. But it's been crazy for him because of his performance earlier on this season. Lance Troll last year was a destructive Lance Troll. For me, he was not in that team. Fernando Alonso was the shining light in that team last year. But Lance Troll, in the last few races, he has done a good job. Outqualified Fernando Alonso, making it look like Fernando Alonso has lost his touch from last season. They had a very good car at the beginning of last season but this season the car had not been improved. I think they left it last season that they went down, really down. Thought they are coming back this season to give us a five-way fight or four-way fight but it was no way fight for them. The Aston Martin has shown that they are in the league of the Alpine, Ass and v Cup this season. They have not shown us that they've developed the car this season that can compete with the likes of Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren. We know Red Bull are out in their own league. They are in a different race for the first part of the season. Lance Stroll has not proved himself worthy in the first part of the season but after a lot of criticism he's come out to show that yes he deserves the seat and he can do a good job that's why he's in number 15 number 14 esteban ocon why esteban ocon a lot of people will disagree esteban ocon i love you but i'll put in number 14 because should have risen up the the ladder but mm -mm -mm -mm, esteban ocon you didn't do a good job especially against your teammate carrying up from last season esteban ocon has not done a good job at all especially with the team he has created it for himself and he has made the team um, severe their relationship with him yes he said the car has not improved and he has complained with the team and he's not confident with the car and since last season he has been looking for a new seat but that does not make you start destroying the car that you don't have Alpine don't have a car they came overweight last season this season they came overweight again is it that the food is too much that you guys are eating in your car I don't understand the crash test they didn't pass it <laughs> <laughs> that's how they came in this season at the beginning of the season they were even worse than the Sauber but they struggled Sauber should be picking points in the first two three races of the season but Sauber were busy fighting with Will Lock <laughs> that was where Ocon and Alpine saved themselves they came back strong but they are still struggling because when you develop the car you are not the only one developing your car other teams are developing their car but the problem with Esteban Ocon this season is he has made the team lose some crucial points while he was fighting on the track fighting for win but he was fighting to destroy his teammates car and his own car that's why he's coming in 14 he's moving to us next season while his teammates will remain in that team but for me Esteban Ocon has not done a good job this season for a car that they know that they are still struggling with though he has picked up more points done a better job than his teammate but his fault still remains a car that you know you are struggling with why should you be destroying it and fighting against your teammate that's not a good job seriously but that's where his fault is and going to number 13 we have Pierre Gasly he's not out of of the league of destroying cars but last season we saw what he had done with the car but this season he has improved he has really calmed down tamed down and really embraced the team and wanted the best for the team and wanted to keep the car while his teammate was fighting with the car but Pierre Gasly had done a better job played a team game and in development of the car he has done a good job which has made the team to focus more on him than on his teammate there are like two races in which he had gotten positions from his teammate and it was not returned that was because they had to play a team game which shows that the team is really projected towards Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon that's their future and I think they're having a new team principal coming in Bruno Farming is going because at the beginning of the season they were struggling even till now they should have improved and we are talking about huge investment in Alpine last season how does these guys get their money heads need to roll so Bruno Farming is going so they should be getting a new driver we don't know the second driver yet but Bruno Farming is going he has not done a terrific job at all and Pierre Gasly still remains in the number 13 like I said based on what he has done this season he has not really shown to us that he deserves to be above that number number 12 this season Alonso he did a good job last season especially with the car that he had last season the Mercedes engine and they're still very ties with the Mercedes engine from 2026 going to under and I think they've got him the signature of Andre Newey which they will reveal sometimes in September that's if they are the one and I think Andre Newey has said he would love to work with Alonso or Hamilton but Alonso I think he will prefer this time because of the deal Lawrence Stroll is giving him 
millions, 100 million for four years. Wow. And also the Honda engine in which he had fallen in love with and he knows much about. So I think that's one of the reasons why he's going to Aston Martin because of the Honda engine. The money and maybe Alonso is playing a part of it. We thought he'll be going to Ferrari but I am not sure Ferrari wants to give him that crazy amount and want to push for him. He's taking his retirement fund. In his late 60s, he'll be driving on water for, for the rest of his life. He has the best cars. He has everything. So what does he need? And Renew is living the best of his life. He's one of the greatest in F1. He won so much while using his hand to draw. That is outstanding for him. So, Fernando Alonso, this season, he has not done a good job with the car that they have. Though the car had been the fifth best car on the grid. But I think Fernando Alonso should have done much experienced job with that car. But no. He has struggled with that car and he has struggled with the team. And at a point, he had a fractured situation with the team in which he himself and the team, they were not on the same page. And that really affected his, his performance this season. That's why he remains 12. The car is part of his problem. Seriously. Number 11 this season, Alexander Albon. Alexander Albon has done a terrific job for Williams. That Williams car, Alexander Albon pushing it to how many Q3s? About 4 or 5 Q3s. Wow. The Williams car getting huge points for that car. Seriously, Alexander Albon has done a terrific job with that car this season. And I think he deserves it all. Though he has had this accident, his fair share of accident, and he had come back to prove himself. And in Williams, he has shown that he's a reliable driver. That is why they trust him more for you. And the team principal, James Wells. Wells has done a good job this season. Though the car has not been a terrific car, they've been both an American consortium. The funding is still lacking, but I think they need two, three years to get together to grow with these new people before we can see what they can do. So we can't really fault them. But Alex Albon has really done a good job. And James Wells has done a good job motivating Alex, motivating Logan Sargent and giving him time and signing Carlos Sainz. It has been a terrific job for him, which makes it a wonderful thing for that team, Williams. Number 10. Daniel Ricciardo, my number 10. And I'll tell you why. At the beginning of the season, the first five races, Daniel Ricciardo was not there. He said his chassis was compromised. They changed his chassis in China. He tried, but after China, he went deep again before he came back. It was in Canada after a lot of criticism by Villanova as some pundit. He came back. He dipped again, then he came back fully in the last few races, doing a good job against his teammate. But around that time, he has lost a lot of points to his teammate. And the complaint about the chassis, for me, yes, you can have 10 chassis, 10 engines, and they don't have the same output, but they will be close. So, most of the qualifying, he has not been close to his teammates, which shows that it's not just the chassis or the engine, it is the driver. But towards the end of this middle of the season, he has done a terrific job, and he's pushed himself, he's pushed him, his teammate. That is why I think um, Red Bull are looking up to him to take Sergio Perez's seat. That might be what will happen very soon, because that seat is looking hungry for Daniel Ricciardo. I think in races, maybe when he gets to Red Bull, he can perform. From what I'm seeing, I'm not seeing him performing well in Red Bull against somebody that has been in that same seat that he left in 2019. That's like five years of consistent growth in that seat. He has driven for Renault, for McLaren, for VCAB. Now, going back, I think he will have um, challenges blending with that car, but will he be able to compete with Max Verstappen next season in the Red Bull? I am not sure. But Daniel Ricciardo this season is number 10 for me because of the way he had driven and in that VCAB and how he had performed in VCAB. Laurent Mekins, the team principal, has shown tremendous growth. He has shown positivity for that and they will continue to be a junior team and give way to Red Bull. That is where they are. But I think Daniel Ricciardo number 10 this season because of the way he has driven. Number 9 for me, Nico Hulkenberg. I said it in the middle of the season. Nico Hulkenberg would drive that Red Bull and compete very tight with Max Verstappen. You may not like me for saying that but I'm telling you the real fact. He has been consistent. He is the second driver to Max Verstappen this season that has been consistent. Last season he was consistent. This season he, he stepped up and he was consistent. That is why Alba, that's Audi will be signing him for next season. He has been consistent all through the season. There is no drop. There is no dip for him. He was consistent and he's consistent and every team he has driven for. He went for two years. He came back. He was consistent. He went for a year. He came back. He was. He has been consistent. That shows the kind of person Nico Hockenberg is. He's serious with his job. He knows what he's doing. And because of the car he's having, that's why he's in number nine for me. He has done a terrific job. He has done a good job this season. And he has shown that he's a driver to be reckoned with if he has a good car and a good machinery with him. I have come out to congratulations. Though you're having a new pair in this season, but great job for the team. Nico Hockenberg driving and giving that team 22 points. That ass is fighting the Aston Martin. Wow. Somebody say, wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is how consistent he has been. My driver is Yuki Tsunoda. And I'll tell you why. Yuki Tsunoda 
far this season has proven himself worthy. Coming from the last two seasons, he has struggled. But this season, he wants to really get into Red Bull in which he can never get into. We know that he cannot get into Red Bull. And I'm sure he knows that he can't get into Red Bull. <laughs> Maybe he's looking at Aston Martin when Honda comes in in 2026. But that seat is not secured because Max Verstappen might be in the seat or in the Mercedes seat in 2026 if he leaves Red Bull. But Yuki Tsunoda has proven himself this season. Even when his teammate was complaining about the chassis, he has delivered 22 points for VCAP this season. He has delivered and he has shown tremendous pace. He is out there to win races. He has shown he is not the rookie driver again. He is now three years or four years in the F1 and he's proven himself to be worthy of the seat VCAP or to drive in the F1. And even if he's going to leave F1 anytime soon, he's proven himself that yes, remember my name, Yuki Tsunoda. Got in some great points, qualified into some few Q3s with that VCAP, which shows there's a prospect for him. Number seven this season, George Russell. Well, for me, you may not like it. I don't care if you like it or not. George Russell will be the new leader in Mercedes, but he's not leading himself well on the track. He has taken so many decisions that were wrong for him this season. The last race, he took a decision that disqualified him in the race. And some other decisions he has taken, especially in Australia, his race with Fernando Alonso was his fault, destroying the car. He has not qualified his teammate, but gradually his teammate has picked up pace especially in the last few races, has gained confidence. He has the confidence in the car since 2022. George Russell has confidence in the car. This ground effect car is a young guy driving against a 39-year-old man, seven-time champion, one of the best experiences in F1, and rating himself, saying, oh, I've outqualified my teammate. I've done this. But I'm not seeing George Russell doing a great job, seriously, since he got into Mercedes, because he got into Mercedes when the car changed and when the car is not suiting to Lewis Hamilton from what the team and the lot of pundits are saying, from what we are seeing, the car is not suiting to Lewis Hamilton's driving style. The car is not even suiting to Michael Verstappen's driving style. <laughs> Seriously. But these guys, because they are young, they are able to get out time from um, this car. That's for George Russell and Max Verstappen. For someone like Lewis Hamilton that's been driving a certain particular type of car for, for like 20 years, driving a new kind of car is difficult for him and blending is difficult for him. So I think for George Russell, this season is decision making and his leadership role is going to take. And the way he has comported himself in Mercedes has not shown that he's working towards the leadership role. He has effortlessly lost points to his teammates in races when he had the chance of winning of leading he would just dash it out by little little mistakes decisions and all sort of and that is why he's in number seven he needs to work hard on his decision making and work hard on himself for the second part of the season Carlos Sainz number six Carlos Sainz has done a good job especially at the beginning of the season appendicitis came back the next race drove well wow what a driver out qualified his teammate in the first three, four races of the season, his teammate has been a good qualifier than him, came back, out qualified him, got more points than him, and so are. But in past races, Charles Leclerc has not been performing. Carlos Sainz has been performing in the last few races. And the battle between these two teammates has been one that I would say has been graceful. These two guys have been driving the heck out of themselves. They've driven so well that you know these guys are on the top of their game. That is, the two Ferrari drivers. In battles, they've respected themselves they've given themselves pace and they've done a beautiful job that has secured him a seat in Williams now one of the reasons why he's fifth for me I've gotten a Mercedes seat I've gotten a Red Bull seat because of the way he has driven but greed he lost those seats now he's getting a Williams seat decision he needs to know how to make the right decision in his life and also on track you need to make the right decision that to put him in the right space Carlos is a great driver and I'm sure he will still prove himself in other teams he has driven almost all the engines in F1 but um, what a wonderful driver he is but his teammate has really shown more consistency and more focus than him that's why his teammate is number five on our list Charles Leclerc at the beginning of the season he was not really there but later he came up and he won the Monaco Grand Prix then then Ferrari dipped, serious dipping. McLaren, Mercedes, they've really closed up to them. And I think if this pace continues, Mercedes are going to be biting oh, 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 behind them. <laughs> but seriously, Charles Leclerc has done a very beautiful job like he has always done for the team. In qualifying, he has pushed himself. And in races, he has also pushed himself. Though Ferrari has had a bit of their own masterpiece of issues. But consistency against his teammate, he has shown it. And against other drivers, he has shown it. And he has shown that he's a formidable foe if he has a good car against the top dogs that's why he's in a number five number four for me lando norris why fourth 
You may not like it, but it's number four because Lando Norris could have done a very good job. He could have been number two because we all know number one. <laughs> Nobody's taking it away from him. He's number one. But Lando Norris, he has had real chances to win races this season for his team. He has bolted it either by his own decision or by team decision in which they could have managed. And most times it has been his own decision losing the races. Number two, when he's fighting against Max Verstappen because of their friendship, he fights fear with Max Verstappen, especially learning a bigger lesson from that industry it has shown that he still has a jittering heart he talks the talk but he can't do the do he is the one that said Lewis Hamilton would not have one point won in the race in this present McLaren and I'm like mm, with the motivation we've seen in Lewis Hamilton in the last four races Lewis Hamilton would have won the four races would have been in contention with Max Verstappen bro shut up and do your job don't just talk you have the best car on the grid now McLaren has the best car on the grid they should be winning races for the past 10 races Races. McLaren had gotten into their mojo. They've gotten a car that can compete with Red Bull in the last eight races. But Norris had been at the end of it all, but he has not been consistent. He has not been focused. He has not shown his power, his talk that he keeps talking, talking, talking every time. Yeah, he's good, he's this, he's that. We are not seeing the talk. Yes, he's holding the second position in drivers' championship, but he's talking the talk. We cannot see the reality of the talk in his drive. He's not showing he has a consistency in drive and it's shown making has shown all through the years that he is weak in his decisions. His shot making is below par. He has not shown how mature he is in his shot making. And that alone is not great for him. He has won a race this season. He could have won four or five races this season. But his decision and his jittering and the respect he has for Max Verstappen has not made him to be able to race Max Verstappen. So, for me, he remains in number four. Number three, the middle of season, Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton has not been on top of this new car from 2022. He has always complained about the car, the way the car is, especially for the Mercedes car. But he has really performed especially last year he outperformed his teammates in 2022 we knew he gave his car for experiment last year he didn't give his car for experiment he has performed his teammate and showed pace early this season he's leaving and we know the whole thing in the team and up until there were tensions in the team and a lot of people calling the team out about sabotage we saw Lewis Hamilton kept on dipping because of whatever is happening with the team but immediately he had the chance of winning in his own race Silverstone Lewis Hamilton had become a hungry lion Lewis Hamilton has been delivering like Okay. No delivery boy, no Uber had delivered better than Lewis Hamilton in the past four races. He has been the top of deliverers. <laughs> if he's the deliverance minister, he will be delivering everybody. He has been delivering in races and he has been consistent. And that is the person Landon Norris has said would not have won races. His time in McLaren was the best time and I'm doubting it because those times were the times we had the best drivers on the grid killing themselves. We have babies like Landon Norris, babies at heart like him <laughs> presently. Lewis Hamilton really killed it. That's why he's third on my list. In the last four races, he has shown himself that he's worthy and he has outqualified his teammate in all those races. In the beginning of the season, we know where Mercedes were. They were not in there, but they struggled. And Lewis Hamilton has shown that in races, he's better than his teammate. In qualifying, he may not really be better than his teammate because see, from what he said, the car is not placing where he wants the car to place. And the team has also confirmed that. But in races, he knew he's got the pace and he has been delivering in races and he has delivered in races. That is Lewis Hamilton for you. And to their team principal, Toto Wolf. I'll give Toto Wolf a 5 this season because he has not shown maturity. He has not shown trust and faithfulness to that team and to the drivers this season. That's why he's getting that. Fred Vassal has been a great motivation for Ferrari. He has shown himself in Ferrari and shown that he really deserves Ferrari's seat and what he's doing in Ferrari. To my second driver this season, presently, middle of season, Oscar Piastri. A young boy with a big head. Oscar Piastri sincerely has been consistent and focused this season with that car. If he had had the same opportunity Lando Norris had had, he would have won more races. Lando Norris is the leader of the team. Oscar Piastri has gotten into the groove. He's now qualifying on the same pace with Lando Norris. Winning races, doing great jobs. And Lando Norris keeps speaking the speak, talking the talk, not doing the job. But Oscar Piastri has been consistent. Check Oscar Piastri. He has been consistent this season. He's one of the most consistent drivers. I'll take him as third consistent driver behind Nico Hockenberg. All through the season, he has been consistent. He has been delivering. And he has been doing a great job. And to Andres Stella has done a great job with this pack. And they 
their CEO, Zach Brown, has also done a great job with the Spark this season. So kudos to them. Oscar Piastri, great job and good caution for him. He's still learning. He has long years to go and I think Mercedes could have stolen him. Our pin lost him. He's a great driver. He has shown consistency and great pace this season. He's number two on our list. To number one, we all know he had no other name than Max Verstappen, the current championship leader, a three-time world champion with that degrading RB20. Max Verstappen are delivered. The RB20 was faster in the first four races, showing pure pace that they are up for it. But immediately McLaren picked the pace. Ferrari too were on pace around that time. Their performance dwindled. Max Verstappen did not dwindle. He was there. He was consistent. He was focused. The only time he messed up was Austria. That is his biggest mess up this season. Yes, Austria and Hungary. His battle with Louis Hamilton that took him out from chasing third to sixth. But every other part, he has been consistent, focused. And I think he did that because he was trying to save the team because the team put him under pressure in those races. In Austria and in Hungary, they put him under pressure with decisions the, the team made with the calls the team make the way the team thought the, the race could be won and it complained on the radio that this is not right this i think will not make them win he fights for win yeah i understand yes sometimes it gets too rough too hasty but this season i can tell you is the most focused the most consistent driver this season in that rb20 that has not been consistent is the most consistent driver he's done a great job can he win the driver's championship it depends on how the rb20 performs the second part of this season that will determine if he can win but i'm not sure the rb20 can give them the right performance they want if it does well it's a great thing for him but max verstappen done a great job if the rb20 gives them the right performance they want he could end up winning but if he does if they can still keep scraping points he could still win but if the mclaren or mercedes can bolster up and win more races then security law but the constructors championship with his teammates lagging behind well can they win the constructors championship i don't think so but they've done a good job to their team principle i think now Chris Hunter should know that he needs to resign. <laughs> Seriously. He has lost trust. He has lost a lot of people. Whitley. A lot of guys. Andre Newey. And he might lose Max Verstappen because where they are getting to or where they've got into now is showing that there's no pace in the car and they're in the wrong direction. And Chris Hunter has his own Lega battles, his own team battles, his own war in the team. So he's not been focused. But I think Chris Hunter is part of the issue that the team is having this season. If they can sort all these things out, I think next year, no matter what they sort out, it will still be a tight field with Ferrari, McLaren and Mercedes to be a tight field. Max Verstappen has proven himself worthy of where he is and he continues to prove himself that he's a three-time world champion and he can still win the fourth one in the RB. But the team principle is not proving himself that he deserves the respect he should get. Now let me talk about two drivers, one that has driven and one that might be coming in for Mercedes next season. Oliver Bierman, one race in F1, got some maximum points, drove himself out, a young lad doing a great job next season for Haas. But my fear is who is pairing with <laughs> Esteban Ocon might not save him. But Oliver Bierman is a star to watch out for and he has done a good race, a good job this season. A lot of people are saying, why should Ferrari not be signing him? But I think Ferrari needs more experience and they need to grow. They need a championship winning driver. They need two champions racing against each other. That is in person of Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton. It's a big team that they are just regrouping. Bringing a young driver will set them back. So that's why I think they are going with Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis Hamilton is a very well experienced driver. The driver with the highest number of wins on the grid. Combining all the wins on the grid, all the championships on the grid, Lewis Hamilton is still ahead of combined all of them. So getting to Ferrari is easy for him. But for Oliver Bierman, he has done himself a good job in F1 this season. But in F2, he has not done himself a good job. His teammate, Kimi Antonelli, has done a better job than him and has proven himself. But will he be able to prove himself in F1 next season? Yes, that question question will be answered by him and him alone next season when he gets to F1. Kimi Antonelli that is the progeny, the prospect that Mercedes are willing to sign and I think they are signing for 2025 season. It should be announced very soon. I think in Monza. He's a great driver. Jumped F3 directly from F1 to F2. I'll be jumping from F2 to F1. Wonderful driver. Mercedes don't want to make the same mistake they made with Max Verstappen not signing him. Immediately Louis Hamilton is leaving. They want to sign a young driver that they can train. One year, two years, they get him into the groove and the championship contender and that is what they want and in which they might be paired Pairing up the Kimi Antonelli with Max Verstappen very soon. We don't know yet, but I think they might be signing Max Verstappen in 2026 with the past struggle and whatever Max Verstappen is facing in Red Bull. But Kimi Antonelli has proven himself that he can get into F1 and show himself. And there might be an handing over between himself and Luis Hamilton, which Luis Hamilton will be handing over to him in style. But Kimi Antonelli is a star to watch out for next season in F1. He has really shown pace in test and everything, but test does not matter. When you get to the track, you show yourself. And in F2, recently, his consistency is paying off. The Premier team, they've not had 
had a very good car but this young guy has been showing himself even his teammate that will be going to ask next season has not proven himself like the way Kimi Antonelli has proven himself the young Italian might be coming into F1 next season to shake the world let's see if he will really do but Kimi Antonelli a young driver with a big prospect small boy big girl let's see what he does next season but these are the people that are shakers and how these teams have performed and this is their report card for the middle of the season will they be able to show us great pace in the remaining part of the season but I can tell you the remaining part of the season will be the most exciting because we've had the last five races the most exciting race in the last two years the next 10 races will be no short of fireworks bangers excitement you can't afford to miss the next 10 races in f1 we'll be meeting in Holland, Netherlands for the dutch grand prix in two weeks time but before then you can catch other videos other podcasts but you always know i love you thank you for always staying tuned thank you for the analysis if you have any question any objection get them in the comment section let me see your opinion let me see your objections but it's going to be a very good season good beautiful 10 races to fight for points and to show dominance will red bull be taking the crown home or mclaren because they're the two main competitors will mercedes be showing that they are there to win it all will we see a resurgence of ferrari to be in the competition well the last 10 races will tell us that they're on the mid-term break checking themselves out giving themselves chickies hanging out with their family and loved ones while the engineers are working their ass out to get the cars ready let's see how it goes on in the next 10 races i love you guys bye Cheap.